Please, uh, may I invite you to find your seat once again? That would be great. And I will use the time already to do some talking here. Um, since uh, I apologize to my next panelists already, I have to catch up quite a bit of time. We're all on a schedule, the event is on a schedule, everybody else is also on a schedule, so I promise we will get back and to our timetable during um, the next session and into the afternoon. So, and by the way, this, this is the biggest panel the world has ever seen. So I apologize to my panelists. Um, this will, be not, will not be much of a discussion. So please feel free to introduce yourselves and what your country is doing on AI and then take the few questions we might be able to discuss and answer them, just the one who maybe fits, sees himself fit to answer. So please do find your seats. So while people are still filing in, I'll say a few words about artificial intelligence already. This next panel is about paving the way for the EU Artificial Intelligence Initiative. And as most of you may know, the Commission is preparing a comprehensive European initiative on AI going to be published on 25th of April of this year. So this is basically part of the preparation for it, of a dialogue about it. And if you, if you listened closely into the first panel, the dialogue about AI already started with um, Matthias Machnik saying a few words about it and some others too, and in the introductory speeches also. So this panel will be introduced again by Commissioner Gabriel. She's already back and, and seated as you all should. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> but I guess we're shortly before everything's quiet again. And please, Commissioner Gabriel, come to stage and say a few words about Europe and AI. Welcome, welcome back. Mesdames et Messieurs les Ministres, chers participants, je commence direct chaque jour la liste des applications issues de l'intelligence artificielle s'allonge, tandis qu'elle s'installe un peu plus dans notre quotidien. Dans un futur proche, nous serons entourés d'objets et de machines intelligentes qui nous rendront de nombreux services et nous simplifieront la vie, que ce soit au travail ou à la maison. L'intelligence artificielle est un élément clé de la transformation numérique en cours. Comme vous le savez, en octobre dernier, le Conseil européen a chargé la Commission de définir une approche européenne pour l'intelligence artificielle. Des initiatives relatives à l'intelligence artificielle existent déjà dans quelques États membres. Mais pour faire face aux évolutions qui ont lieu dans d'autres régions du monde, y compris telles que la Chine ou les États-Unis, par exemple, l'Europe a besoin d'une stratégie globale, intégrale et basée sur nos valeurs européennes. Nous avons déjà mis en place un certain nombre de propositions qui contribueront au développement de ces technologies, telles que la protection de la libre circulation des données, une meilleure connectivité, la cybersécurité, de même que des investissements conjoints dans les superordinateurs et les semi-conducteurs. De plus, comme vous le savez certainement, la Commission proposera l'adoption d'un nouvel ensemble de mesures d'ici la fin du mois d'avril, visant à faciliter l'accès et l'utilisation des données à caractère non personnel, ainsi qu'une communication pour une stratégie globale de l'intelligence artificielle. Nous le savons, l'intelligence artificielle est un moteur essentiel de croissance et de productivité. Des études récentes estiment la contribution de l'intelligence artificielle à l'économie mondiale 
à plus de 40 milliards d'euros d'ici 2030. La Commission européenne a depuis de longues années reconnu l'importance et le potentiel de l'intelligence artificielle et la nécessité d'investissement dans ce domaine. Le partenariat public-privé pour la robotique en Europe est un des programmes civils de recherche en robotique et intelligence artificielle les plus importants au monde. La Commission a investi plus d'un milliard d'euros pour l'intelligence artificielle jusqu'à présent et compte investir un milliard supplémentaire d'ici 2020. Ainsi, l'investissement total, privé et public dépassera les 6 milliards d'euros par an. Par ces investissements, nous avons l'intention de créer une plateforme européenne collaborative d'intelligence artificielle, ouverte et accessible à tous. Grâce à cette plateforme, tout utilisateur aura accès aux technologies de pointe et un soutien technique par des experts qui, par exemple, pourraient aider les petites et moyennes entreprises à intégrer les derniers algorithmes dans leurs produits, à développer de nouveaux services ou encore à intégrer l'intelligence artificielle dans les processus de production. Le but est aussi de fournir aux utilisateurs un maximum de données et d'exploiter au mieux les sources d'informations disponibles. L'accès à des volumes importants de données de qualité est un effet essentiel pour un grand nombre d'applications. C'est nécessaire de permettre à tous, tant l'industrie traditionnelle comme nos PME et start-up, de bénéficier de ces avantages. Aussi, dans les années à venir, nous voulons non seulement renforcer les pôles d'innovation en intelligence artificielle existants, mais aussi développer un réseau solide qui relie ces pôles. L'objectif étant que chaque entreprise, quelle que soit sa taille ou sa spécialisation, puisse avoir un accès de proximité aux compétences et aux installations de tests dans toutes les technologies numériques les plus récentes, en particulier l'intelligence artificielle. Dans ce contexte, vous vous demanderez quelle serait la contribution de la stratégie européenne pour l'intelligence artificielle que nous avons l'intention de présenter d'ici la fin de ce mois. Tout simplement, et en vertu de garder une approche intégrale et cohérente de nos actions, la stratégie a pour but de relancer la compétitivité des entreprises européennes tout en garantissant la confiance des utilisateurs et son développement sur la base des valeurs européennes. La stratégie comprendra trois axes majeurs pour lesquels nous comptons sur l'engagement fort des États membres. D'abord, travailler à consolider la capacité technologique et industrielle de l'Europe en ce qui concerne le développement et l'adoption de l'intelligence artificielle. Ensuite, aborder les défis socio-économiques tels que l'impact de l'automatisation sur l'emploi et les compétences. Trois, traiter les questions éthiques, juridiques, telles que la vie privée, la responsabilité civile et la sécurité. Toutefois, mesdames et messieurs les ministres, sans une coopération étroite entre la Commission et les États membres, mais aussi avec le Parlement européen, le Comité économique et social européen, le Comité des régions, ainsi que les organisations internationales et les forums internationaux, nos efforts seront vains. C'est pourquoi, aujourd'hui, à l'occasion de la Digital Day, vous êtes invités à signer une déclaration de coopération. Cette déclaration vous engage à coopérer pour consolider la capacité industrielle de l'intelligence artificielle et son adoption, à faire face ensemble aux défis socio-économiques du marché de travail et à aborder les questions éthiques et juridiques liées à l'intelligence artificielle. Pour moi, le soutien et l'engagement des États membres est une pièce essentielle de l'échiquier de l'intelligence artificielle. Sans une discussion de fond et un plan d'action commun, nous ne pourrons pas tirer le maximum des bénéfices de cette nouvelle technologie. C'est pour cette raison 
que j'ai aussi décidé d'intégrer une discussion sur l'intelligence artificielle à chacune des réunions de haut niveau dans le cadre de l'initiative européenne de numérisation de l'industrie. Enfin, permettez-moi quelques mots sur une initiative qui me tient particulièrement à cœur, l'Alliance européenne pour l'intelligence artificielle qui viendra compléter notre stratégie. L'Alliance sera à la fois une plateforme et un forum. Elle permettra de collecter des informations, échanger des opinions et développer des priorités communes. L'Alliance sera aussi invitée à proposer des recommandations pour les initiatives à venir. Par exemple, nous attendons d'ici début 2019 des recommandations pour un usage éthique de l'intelligence artificielle qui prendra en compte les droits fondamentaux de la personne et le travail du futur. Mesdames et Messieurs, en guise de conclusion, permettez-moi de partager avec vous une conviction personnelle. La voie à suivre, c'est plus de coopération, plus de cohérence, plus d'Europe. Dans le futur, nous devons absolument éviter la fragmentation des efforts et exploiter l'excellence de notre recherche et notre capacité industrielle afin d'assurer la compétitivité de nos entreprises. De même, il est essentiel de garder le citoyen européen au centre de ce processus. C'est pourquoi nous devons attacher une attention et un soin particulier à la manière dont nous communiquons avec nos concitoyens afin qu'à l'acceptation par la société de ces technologies et les questions éthiques et sociétales soient le fil rouge qui guide toutes nos actions. Il va sans dire que la contribution et l'engagement de l'ensemble des parties prenantes, y compris les États membres, sont évidemment essentiels pour le succès de cette initiative. Je finirai en disant que ce n'est qu'en établissant un dialogue constructif et pertinent sur l'intelligence artificielle et ce n'est qu'en joignant nos efforts que nous permettrons à l'Europe de bénéficier de ses promesses. Je vous remercie. So, Commissioner, Commissioner Gabriel, Commissioner Gabriel, thank you. I was told you will be on the panel also. So just come back. <laughs> you will be seated right in the middle. We just have to um, switch the nameplates a bit. Um, um, so what we'll, we'll manage. <laughs> you, it, it should be around here. It will be right. OK. So um, and uh, as I've promised, this is the biggest panel you have ever seen. And I will not call out everybody by name, but by title to uh, avoid this awkward moment that I misspell those, those names that I'm not absolutely familiar with in uh, every uh, regard. So please uh, join us on stage, the Depu Deputy Prime Minister and Minister for Public Administration of Slovenia, the Minister for Housing and Digital Development of Sweden, the Minister of Energy, Tourism, and for the Digital Agenda of Spain, Pat Breen, the Minister, oh sorry, that was the name, Minister for Trade, Employment, Business, EU Digital Single Market and Data Protection of Ireland, um, Minister for Science, Technology and Higher Education of Portugal, Minister for Education and Employment of Malta, State Secretary of Education and Research of Germany, Under Secretary of State, Ministry of Digital Affairs Poland, um, State Secretary of Digital Affairs France, State Secretary Ministry of Transport and Communications Finland, Member of the European Economic and Social Committee, uh, Ms. Müller, um, then um, Luciano Floridi from the Oxford Internet Institute. Are you all here? Wow. Welcome. So may I just step by you? Um, so um, before we start with this amazing panel of natural intelligence, 
Um, I would um, like to uh, go back to the social media part of it. I was told by the uh, Commission's social media team that uh, the hashtag um, is already number one, uh, trending number one in Belgium. So please go ahead and um, Twitter as fast as you can uh, so that the world knows that it's not only China and the US when it comes to digital digitalization. Uh, digital Day 18 is the hashtag. And um, of course, we have um, results by our online poll for this uh, panel also. We come to that later. So um, uh, I apologize to not be able to call you up by name. Uh, and uh, it would be a, a lie if I would say, I know you all. <laughs> so um, uh, please uh, um, use the chance to introduce yourself very briefly to the audience and uh, the first minute um, of uh, your statement to um, what your, your country is doing when it comes um, to AI. We'll, we'll start with um, Boris and go down the list. Everybody has one minute with a statement on AI, please. Uh, thank you. So I'm coming from Slovenia. Uh, and we said uh, a few years ago that Slovenia will become and is becoming a green reference country in digital Europe. What's uh, mean with that slogan? That means that we try to not invent new things, but to apply them on a system level. And uh, for any kind of a digitalization or digital technologies that are coming, we are ne never looking at them separately, like uh, blockchain, 5G and so on but we are looking at them as a part of a one ecosystem, which is part of a social ecosystem of cooperation. And this is the way how we are looking also on artificial intelligence with the institutes, cooperation with the companies, research and science, civil society even. So this is how we build our uh, faster digital transformation as one big ecosystem in which role of government is to ensure communication and to ensure cooperation. So let people cooperate with each other. Uh, Peter. This is OK, yeah. I'm Peter Eriksson. I'm a, a minister in Sweden for the Greens. I was earlier a few years in the European Parliament also, and also been a party leader for the Greens. I, uh, in Sweden, we realize that uh, we, uh, as Europe uh, nowadays, often say that we come a bit uh, after, after China, after the US in this respect to AI. But now we are focusing very much on AI. We have uh, big investments coming mainly from uh, uh, the private sector. And we focus on the research, uh, development and education. And uh, uh, I would like to stress uh, also that the European Union should uh, focus quite a lot on ethics on, in this matter and also on the public sector. I think we have much to do to closing up and getting closer to, to uh, the citizens and to meet uh, them in faster decision making and, and more, more efficient public sector if we go for AI in a, in a broad way. Hmm. It was efficient to get this panel together, so we're on our way. Um, Alvaro Nadal. Hello, good morning. I'm the Minister of Digital Agenda in Spain. There are so many things we try to do to, to, to foster in uh, artificial intelligence that uh, it would be difficult to summarize in just one minute. But one important point, we need networks. We are developing networks a lot. Secondly, we need education. Many regions, they are, it's up to the regions, are investing a lot and putting us compulsory to have a subject on algorithm writing, logic uh, formality, these kind of things. And we use our uh, social welfare scheme. We have a health card and a new social card that is using international uh, artificial intelligence to deal with all this big data and to uh, try to understand better our social policies. And we are working a lot on the language, natural language. Spanish is one of the most important communication languages in the world. And we want artificial intelligence to be carried out, to be developed in a native speaking country like Spain. Um, it will be interesting to see if uh, Spanish will be faster than German when it comes to artificial intelligence. 
Um, both quite difficult, if you ask me. So, um, uh, who is the next? Um, Pat Breen. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Chairman. Can I say, first of all, how important the digital economy is to Ireland and in relation to our, um, the recovery of our economy as well. We have recognised this and we're planning for the future and our Enterprise 2025 document is planning for the future, particularly in relation to uh, artificial intelligence and the impact it has on um, productivity, growth and innovation. Uh, it's worth about, the digital economy is worth about 12.7 billion euros to us and by 2020, we expect that to double and the same in relation to job numbers, uh, an increase of 50% or so. We have a flourishing artificial intelligence um, number of companies at home in Ireland, uh, many of the multinational companies, but also SMEs, and uh, they support, uh, uh, support the country really well at the moment. Um, our third level institutes, very important to us. Uh, they have focused in very much on artificial intelligence, and, uh, and particularly in the areas of research and technology centres. Recently, um, our, one of our university has just launched a new master's degree in artificial intelligence for engineers. So uh, we have a flourishing, as I said, um, uh, artificial intelligence um, number of companies. And uh, I'm looking forward particularly to hear the Commission's communication, uh, what they have to say in artificial intelligence. But let me say, Ireland is really doing well at the moment uh, in relation to the digital economy and the transformation we see for the future as well. I like the part about small and medium-sized companies, and I guess, if, uh, the, is that in, in Dublin where you can study all this? Uh, I it's always worthwhile to study in Dublin, I guess. So. Yeah, well, no, our, our third-level systems uh, and our, our, um, uh, our, uh, are really, really important to us. We built a lot of innovation centers around those third-level institutes, uh, and they specialize in digital technology, and look, they're now looking at artificial intelligence. And that's where the SMEs really flourish, and they grow. They grow from two, three, four, five. We have 14 of those uh, in, 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 around the country at the moment, and um, they have... Uh, very much part of our priority policies for the future as we grow the economy and as we reach full employment, which we hope to in the very near future. Keep my fingers crossed. Um, Manuel Haitor. <laughs> Thank you very much. My appeal will be to look at the future. And we, for instance, take two examples. Natural language, in particular online uh, uh, translation, and second, facial recognition. We see that over the last 10 years, the fast changing way technology has been used through artificial intelligence and machine learning related technologies apply us certainly to strengthen investment in research. At the same time, we increase social responsibility issues. Therefore, the opportunity in the coming months to discuss the next framework program in a, in, a, in a cohesive way to look at the future of European citizens should be our main target. Evarist. Evarist Bartolo from Malta, Minister for Education and Employment. Uh, I would say that in our uh, small island state, uh, Artificial intelligence has uneven development in terms uh, both in employment and education. Some are quite advanced, others are less advanced. From our experience, uh, we should ask the question, not is where artificial intelligence taking us, but where are we taking artificial intelligence? We have the, I think, the tendency to say uh, with a kind of technological fatalism as if we are being carried forward by a wave which we cannot control, and that would be very dangerous. We think that there's nothing intrinsically right or wrong in it, but it's what we do with it. And we need to have a set of values, inclusion. Uh, artificial intelligence will create winners, and let's have as many winners as possible, but let's not forget the losers. If we forget the losers, they will come back to haunt us, and they will also threaten our democracy, threaten our fair societies. And the last word, even at a European level, when we compete with China and the United States, and we've mentioned this a lot, Let's compete with our values. Let's not have a race to the bottom. Yeah, very sure. We, we, we need those, those values within the AI discussion. Georg. My name is Georg Schütt. I'm State Secretary in charge of Research and Innovation Strategy in Germany. Germany has a track record in artificial intelligence research. We started more than three decades ago. And today, the German Research Center on Artificial Intelligence is the largest in the world. But 
we have to reunite and join forces again. So we've created new competence centers on big data analysis, on machine learning, on data security. Um, the lessons we learned is number one, honesty. We were, during the first hype, we created a center and the hype slowed down and many people forgot about AI. By honesty, I mean we have to be honest about what we can promise if we now talk about application of AI technology, if we talk about ethical issues, if we talk about the users, honesty is the first thing. Second thing is responsibility. We have to sustainably fund national research before we talk about a European perspective. And number three is let's be ambitious. Let's talk about what we can do together in Europe. Let me echo my colleague uh, Matthias Machnik who called for a joint infrastructure, who called for a joint digital and single digital market. And we have to then ask how can we apply this technology that it benefits the people in Europe? This is the key question we have to address. Thank you. Um, Carol. Uh, so, um, my name is Karol Lokonski. I'm a Deputy Minister in the Ministry of Digital Affairs. So, just given the name of the ministry, you can see that Poland treats digital affairs as, as, as important as a foreign or internal affairs. And uh, now, as, as for artificial intelligence, I think the, definitely the stage of development of the technology and the, the solutions, and uh, given the, the horizontal scope, of the topic, definitely this is a time to, to start a multi-stakeholder, multinational uh, discussion about the topic. And I'm, I'm very grateful for the European Commission that it brought this topic very high here on the, on the agenda. And now, again, I think it's again it's one of the topics where we, we can also think that this is something that you know all me members of the European Union can reintegrate upon and can, can really cooperate. And here, knowing that. Uh, that the voice of more countries uh, uh, than the single one, that uh, the group of countries is definitely more important than uh, given, the, given this, this, this fact. We also uh, have prepared a non-paper on artificial intelligence as a combined joint paper of uh, V4, so Visegrad group, and we are also very happy uh, and, uh, to discuss and to get into more broader discussion on this. Thank you. Thanks for being part of it. Mounir. Hi. Uh, la France est très en soutien des annonces qu'a fait la commissaire Maria Gabriel tout à l'heure et très en attente d'une véritable stratégie européenne sur ce sujet. Il y a deux semaines, le président de la République, Emmanuel Macron, a annoncé la stratégie française pour l'intelligence artificielle. Et en annonçant cette stratégie française, on a énormément parlé d'Europe. C'est dire à quel point on attend beaucoup euh, des annonces du 25 avril et nous serons très en soutien. Le... L'événement que nous avons fait en France il y a deux semaines s'appelait « Intelligence artificielle pour l'humanité »,« AI for humanity ». Et c'est un résumé de notre vision d'intelligence artificielle. À la fois la performance, comment on fait de la France et de l'Europe un champion de l'intelligence artificielle, mais en même temps humanité, c'est-à-dire en se posant la question de l'impact, en se posant la question des valeurs. Et je soutiens notre collègue qui disait qu'on a une façon de rentrer en compétition avec d'autres continents et qui sera sur les valeurs. Alors, on ne fait aucun renoncement sur la performance, mais on ajoute au contraire encore plus d'humanité. Thank you. I had to wait for the translation. I apologize. Um, I should have listened better, better to my French teachers at school. Sorry. So th thank you all for this very first round. We have two more experts on the panel. I will introduce them a little bit later to, to, to the discussion. And of course, the commissioner will get her part also. I would like to um, get the online audience um, into the equation here with this question we asked for session two. What is um, the most pressing challenge that Europe needs to address um, to benefit from artificial intelligence? And we have the results right here. Um, it's uh, transparency of and accountability for AI on number one with 24% of the votes, uh, followed closely by research and innovation with 23. And then we have education on third, um, which is interesting since usually education is first in, um, 
those poles, so there is a difference here. We have the need for safety rules uh, and standards with 19% and access to large data pools with 14%. If I may add one personal comment on those results we've seen in the panel before and here, when it comes to big data in the first panel and this 14% for the access to large data pools, I think that's way too low because without large data pools, there won't be any AI, and without the access to big data, uh, everything else is uh, not uh, going to happen either. So, um, Commissioner Gabriel, what's your first take on, on, on this round and this, this poll? Concernant les, les données, c'est très réconfortant. Cela montre que, sein de la Commission, nous sommes dans la bonne direction, puisque j'ai parlé des trois dimensions de notre stratégie. La première se focalise sur le renforcement de nos capacités technologiques. Voici la recherche et l'innovation. C'est aussi un message fort qui, est, qui a été émis par les ministres pour soutenir l'excellence de notre recherche, pour populariser les, les bonnes pratiques. Ensuite, évidemment, il y a les questions qui concernent la sécurité. Ce sont des questions éthiques et juridiques que l'Europe doit avoir le courage d'adresser parce qu'elle pourrait les adresser différemment par rapport à d'autres. Et enfin, évidemment, la, la question liée à l'impact sur les compétences, sur les, le marché de travail. Voici l'homme au centre de notre approche. Voici l'approche que nous devons garder comme, comme, comme Européens. Une approche centrée sur l'humain, une approche fondée sur le, les valeurs, mais en même temps, une approche qui encourage, qui soutient et qui affirme l'excellence d'une recherche qui existe, mais qui se donne les moyens pour soutenir une recherche qui pourrait faire la différence. Thank you. Um, I have to apologize once again since I skipped one of... Um, <laughs> I skipped Finland. And I'm so sorry. Excuse me. <laughs> it's so many people. Um, so, so please um, uh, bring into our discussion the Finnish perspective and maybe you can um, say a few words to what the commissioner already said. Okay, please. How much I have time? Uh, 1.30. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Mr. Moderator, it's of course a great honor to, for me to be here. My name is Jari Partanen, and I'm State Secretary for Finland, and I'm working in this business with our Minister of Economic Affairs and Minister for Transportation. Dear friends, AI is one era where we have the excellent prerequisites and potential to become forerunners. Thus, we seek to grasp this opportunity and have created an artificial intelligence strategy for Finland. We started the work on Finland's AI strategy a year ago and published the recommendations guiding our work last October. The last six months, we have been implementing the actions. We have been pleased to notice that many other countries are working on their journeys to AI era as well. And of course, we are happy to cooperate with these countries. Okay, thank you. And again, my apologies. So, um, Let's start with a few, few questions, and uh, please feel free to just pick them up as you feel fit, as I've already said. Um, looking at The Economist, uh, the magazine, a couple of weeks ago, the battle for AI seems to be fought between China and the United States. Um, what is Europe's role in, in this equation? Where is our particular strength to be the third one in this role um, when it's not only about money. I guess it can't be only about money in Europe. There has to be something else. So what's the answer to get back into the race between China, the US, and Europe when it comes to AI? Who, who wants to take that? Georg, for example, and then over there, right? We'll move from here to there. 
I think we look, have to look at the research strength of Europe. We do have a very important research centers all over Europe in all our member states, and we have to combine forces. So the, the challenge, number one, just like the commissioner said, is to network the excellent research that we have. The challenge we face is application of technology and transformation of this technology into value creation to the, for the benefit of the people. Here we lag behind. But if we look at the United States and China, we talk about consumer data. One of our strengths in Europe is the data we have in business processes and production processes. And this is an untapped resource which we have to tap and which we have to take advantage of. So we have to think about application in quite a number of fields. And then the competitive advantage number three is if we talk about norms, values, and ethical standards, we can create AI applications to the benefit of the people that are not targeted towards social control, as in China, which are not targeted towards business-only purposes, as in the United States. So if we apply the technology in a responsible way and try to develop business models uh, in other fields than already occupied by the, our competitors all over the world, then we can be able to apply the technology for the benefit of Europe. To all the others who want to answer this question, I, go, I guess we go with Ireland first. Um, just in between, uh, do we have the right laws to be able to tap those data pools already? Um, maybe you can address that too. Well, I think we're coming from a very strong base, particularly in relation to research development, and we have a very strong technological base. So what we have to do is put ourselves to the forefront and excel in the area of artificial intelligence. And this is about collaboration, all of us working together, like we do in Ireland in relation to our government departments, to um, small to medium enterprises, um, uh, the, the large multinational companies, and the third level institutions, which I mentioned earlier. This is about working together to collaborate. As policymakers, I believe uh, we need to be visionaries, uh, and that, that's important to ensure what problems there are out there with artificial intelligence to, to, to get to the bottom of those. And I'm confident that we can do that over time, uh, but it's all about working together to ensure that we invest in uh, cutting edge resources, uh, and technology, and of course, infrastructure, which is important as well. Sweden and Portugal were, uh, right, start with Sweden and then go to Portugal. Yes, I, I think uh, this uh, poll you showed us just earlier uh, is very uh, interesting because uh, it's, you can uh, uh, see it as uh, we are very confused. We don't know what we would like to do because everything was on uh, around 20%. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, but I think it shows also that, uh, or, and more, that we have to do uh, many things. It's not just one. It's not enough with more research. We have to, we have to do things on education as well. And I, I think this is a very uh, different thing uh, if you compare with uh, uh, other digital changes, because now it's uh, uh, taking on something along with the old knowledge. It's uh, uh, engineers with new competence that can make AI useful. It's uh, uh, social uh, competences, economic competences with AI. So you have to see it as a complement to many other things. And uh, therefore, uh, I think uh, the, the, the broad uh, uh, perspective uh, in taking in education in a lifelong learning and, and uh, complement to, to existing organization is a very important uh, way to see all this change we have to do. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, there is, there is to, to all the others in the audience, there is a um, clock ticking down so that people are disciplined. Exactly. So let's see how Portugal does in that. Thank way. you very much. Let me emphasize the, the points mentioned by Georg Schulz, particularly in terms of going beyond traditional business or social control. And the key role of public administration in Europe at large could be very decisive. In Portugal, we are taking a, a pilot action to put together the research community in projects with public administration, which goes from the biomedical area, for instance, advising people how to use um, antibiotics, to uh, the uh, social protection in terms of unemployment um, um, trends. And the idea to give 
the, the public interest of research in the area of AI will build a social construct which certainly will help the social responsibility that Georg and others have, have mentioned. Nevertheless, it will require further investments in R&D, public and private, and that is overall a key issue for Europe at large, because we can complain against Europe or the United States, but definitely we need to invest more in research at the same time we do understand the need for a collaborative effort between public and private sectors. I, I would like to transfer to the next, okay, briefly, France. Yeah, briefly on your question on data set and uh, the, the availability of data. Uh, la question qu'on s'est posée sur ces jeux de données, elle est très importante parce qu'il n'y a pas d'intelligence artificielle sans des jeux de données de très haute qualité. Et on a identifié au moins trois sujets sur lesquels c'était très important qu'on puisse avoir une discussion au niveau européen. Il y a les premiers jeux de données qui ont été financés par de l'argent public. Que ce soit dans le cadre de la recherche publique, que ce soit des entreprises subventionnées, il y a le sujet de ces données qui peuvent avoir une utilité pour toute l'économie et pour la recherche, et sur lesquels il faut qu'on puisse créer un statut pour qu'elles soient utilisées. Ensuite, il y a l'échange de données volontaires au sein d'une industrie donnée, d'une industrie. Euh, si tous les opérateurs de logiciels d'agriculture acceptent de se mettre ensemble et de partager tous leurs jeux de données, on pourra faire de l'intelligence artificielle de très haut niveau. Mais s'ils refusent de le faire, alors la somme de chacune de leurs innovations sera moins intéressante. Donc il faut qu'on soit capable de favoriser, aujourd'hui l'option de la France a été de faire une incentive financière, de dire si certains secteurs où les concurrents sont d'accord pour se mettre d'accord pour échanger leurs données, le gouvernement soutiendra. Et puis il y a un troisième sujet, c'est les données du privé, mais qui ont un intérêt général. Ça c'est une nouvelle discussion qu'il faut qu'on soit capable d'avoir, c'est de se dire qu'il y a certains acteurs qui possèdent des jeux de données, qui s'ils étaient utilisés par la recherche publique ou par d'autres euh, entreprises privées, pourraient apporter plus de bienfaits dans la vie des citoyens. Et bien ça c'est un nouveau sujet, c'est une nouvelle façon de réfléchir à ces données, et je pense que ça va être l'actualité des prochaines semaines. Right. Um, those data pools are uh, imperative to be able to uh, catch up with AI. It's don't underestimate uh, that. I, I would like to get to the next um, uh, question. Um, and Finland already raised his hand. Um, you have heard about um, the Commission's plans to set up the EU AI alliance. The Commissioner talked about it, and the idea is that all stakeholders, industry, academica, academia, civil society, will discuss the opportunities and reflect on guidelines. But um, what's your view on self-regulatory measures that might come out of this? And which role, even more important, maybe do you see for governments in the governance of AI? And since you've already talked about the ethics of all of it, I thought this question might fit. Well, the writer in Finland, AI program we had two principles of ways of working guiding us, ecosystem and modern PPP. This is reflected in the setup of the program working group and steering committee, but also in the actions and everyday working of the program. On ethical guidelines, I'm happy to report that we have been act actively contacted by cooperation that are willing to contribute to working together to establish AI ethical guidelines. Just last week, we have set up a group of leaders of 20 ecosystems from sectors such as unmanned maritime vehicles to smart packaging. Okay, so in, in Finland, actually, companies are working together with government to establish those, those new rules. That's, that's, I, I guess that fits perfectly into what the Commission plans, right, Commissioner Gabriel? Well, I would like just to ask to give the floor a little bit more for, for the other woman in this panel, uh, Kathleen Müller, who witches is us. Because, you know, without, you know, without, without her, I could not be there if I respect my engagement with my, with my campaign, No Women, No Panel. You so are... it will be great for me if we can just give her the floor a little bit more. Thank you. She is so right, but uh, you have to help me out here since I'm not um, rude. 
it was planned that way. <laughs> so um, it it's was true. planned, as it's this true. entire thing is choreographed, um, uh, <laughs> that those two experts on both uh, ends of the panel will give their insights and, and um, if you will, opinion on what the politicians said um, um, uh, during the panel. So, but of course, we can uh, change that and please, be, feel free to, to share your, your input with all that. Just in between uh, yeah. the opportunity. Thank you, Maria. Um, you're so right. Um, I think there, uh, just first of all, we need uh, more women in AI and more women in um, tech companies and also in um, uh, decision-making positions in tech companies. And they don't even have to only be women that are experts in AI, but they could be experts in all sorts of things. Um, but that is that is really important. Just to react really fast, and I, I hope in the end I get well, another then. opportunity, maybe if you have the time. No, not anymore. Just, no, <laughs> this is my chance. Um, so I'm from the e um, uh, European Economic and Social Committee, and I'm Rapporteur on Artificial Intelligence. I look at it from a societal point of view. Um, the question that um, has been raised and that uh, I get a lot also is what can Europe do uh, while uh, China is far ahead and um, uh, the United States is far ahead? What can we do to, to lead in AI? And my answer is what kind of AI do we want to lead in? We can lead in responsible AI. We can lead in ethical AI, in AI that is of a high quality, that was... Um, uh, taught on data sets that are bias free and that are complete, that um, uh, consists of algorithms that uh, are of a high quality and that are uh, coded by diverse teams uh, uh, with women in it, with minorities in it, uh, as to reflect uh, uh, our actual world. That is what we in Europe can lead in. And I think that uh, with uh, Commissioner Gabriel's initiative, we have taken a global pole position now in setting the right framework for the development of responsible AI because that is what we need. We don't need to, to, to be the first mover because we'll never be. There are other first movers around, but we can be the first mover in responsible AI. Right. But now, Commissioner, it's your turn to comment on that one. <laughs> Please. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, I seem to be... Uh, uh, sorry, the Commissioner first, then you, Luciana. <laughs> Sorry, 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 sorry. First, the commissioner, please. Uh, a, a few ideas on, on what she said. Évidemment, c'est exactement dans, dans cette direction qu'on doit continuer à travailler. Uh, nous avons une approche qui est centrée sur cette intelligence artificielle responsable, mais c'est aussi se donner les moyens. C'est pour cela que je crois ici, il y a eu des messages clés extrêmement forts qui ont été soulevés. D'une part, penser à l'excellence de notre recherche mais pensez toujours à l'application, à l'aspect pratique. Et ça ne suffit pas seulement d'innover, il faut tout de suite penser à l'application de manière très pragmatique dans la vie quotidienne, mais aussi dans, dans, le, dans le cadre de, de la vie de nos entreprises pour pouvoir affirmer ce leadership européen. De même, de continuer à défendre nos, nos valeurs et d'avoir cette approche centrée sur l'humain. Pour moi, ce sont des, des messages clés aujourd'hui qui, qui font en sorte que l'approche européenne Pas seulement qu'elles prennent de plus en plus des contours précis, mais c'est qu'on montre qu'à l'intérieur de l'approche européenne, il y a un contenu, un contenu qui pourrait faire la différence de l'Europe par rapport aux autres. Right, and better, different and better than the competitors, and I guess it's achievable. So, uh, Luciano, now, uh, as you've already um, chimed in there, um, please, um, we'll, we'll, we'll change the setup a little bit. So, what's your take on, on this discussion so far. Are you sure? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, moderation is an art that not everybody can master. Uh, it's a difficult art. I understand the difficult task. So um, going forward, uh, I was taking please, notes while so, um, so our colleagues were talking. Uh, I, I thought I had my floor. Uh, um, and uh, uh, I've been told that I have to be quick, philosophers not to be trusted uh, in terms of being quick. So uh, I took notes about some keywords uh, well, in terms of ethics, uh, honesty in our promises when it comes to AI, responsibility in the sort of AI that we develop, 
ambition, a European ambition to do the right thing, but also transparency so that people will see what we're doing. And uh, there are no mysteries, no zombie movies, so to speak. And uh, accountability, because if something goes wrong, you need to know who lies behind the technology. Blaming the technology is always too easy, uh, and washing your hands is, is a classic. So these are just five keywords, and they seem to me to point towards uh, very European, and I'm talking about um, continental Europe here, where you're thinking about technology. Um, you heard this a thousand times, uh, human dignity, of course, with a twist, a 21st century twist, which I heard seems to me uh, in the discussion so far. I think we have now grown up sufficiently to acknowledge our fragility, how human dignity is also made of things like flexibility, we are malleable, we can be changed, we can be nudged also in the wrong way. So uh, to pick up uh, from the other expert uh, the idea, well, responsible innovation is also responsible towards all of us who can be pushed in one way or another by their AI. AI is a new force of agency, and as such uh, is interacting with other agents, us. The ethics that we need to develop uh, for the last 16 seconds is not so much an ethics of don't do this, don't do that, uh, don't run with scissors in the corridor, uh, but more like um, a facilitator. Ethics has a dual advantage. It allows us in Europe to grab the right opportunities and avoid cost. We've seen what happens when uh, you don't do ethics, how expensive that is. So avoid mistakes, grab the opportunities. That seems to me the European way of doing AI today. Well, uh, if, if you don't mind, we'll do another round with everybody to, to, to close this, this panel um, and to give everybody the chance to, to say a few more words. Um, what do you personally see as the biggest opportunity of artificial intelligence in the years to come? And what's in, in your very own personal eye um, the biggest challenge raised by it? And I guess we'll, we'll go from here to there. And um, everybody's invited to just for as, as short as possible. Thank you. Um, the biggest opportunity, there are several opportunities, of course. Um, uh, AI could be used uh, to our advantages in healthcare and climate change. I think we should uh, try to focus attention on not making all kinds of funny tools with it, but try also to address um, larger social problems with it, because that's a promise, and, and uh, I haven't seen that much yet. It's not that sexy, maybe, but right. we could focus on that. I see, uh, I see large opportunities there. Um, the challenge at this point, there are challenges ahead uh, in the future, maybe, but the challenge at this point, I think, is uh, to make sure that what, what we throw out there, what we throw at, at people is of high quality and um, that it is used responsibly. So if a company that or, or a, a public service that is not necessarily um, uh, an expert in AI itself or an AI maker is going to use AI, just make sure that it is of high quality, there to ask questions, what was the data used to train this, um, uh, who made it, what can it do, what can it not do. Um, I think quality and responsible use at this moment is very important. Okay. Uh, even shorter, if I may. Yes, very short. Thank you, moderator. <laughs> we have all the right elements and the great foundation, I think. If we just can be bold, believe in ourselves, take the leap towards EA era. And when I'm in Brussels, I have to say that in Europe, we need to ensure significant investment in research and growth funding for companies. Yes, Thank we need you. more money from 21 onward. Yes, I will stress that the values of inclusion, the values of diversity and uh, fairness should be across all different areas of policy. We cannot have one set of values when we talk about the pillar of social rights and then we forget it when we talk about artificial intelligence, or we forget it when we talk about 
uh, budget and finance. I think that's very important that where we can be ahead of China and the, and the US is that our model should not be seen as a weakness. Sometimes we're told, oh, you think too much about inclusion, you think too much about well, diversity. A Whereas it's, a, it's, a, it's an area of strength as long as we stick to it. And we should not, should not be intimidated by it. Um, the other point I would like to stress is the importance of education. Education, which is lifelong. Um, this morning, uh, one of my colleagues mentioned primary education. I think that's already too late. Childcare and kindergarten education is, I think, more important than primary education. We need to start with that. And to contaminate education with as much reality as possible. Because what is happening is that, especially artificial intelligence is very strong in the economy and falling behind in education. And if we contaminate education with as much as messy reality as possible, it's important. And we talk about competence rather than qualifications. We still tend to talk about qualifications when we need to help our young people and all our people throughout their lives. Because I repeat, we will create winners, but let's not forget the losers. We need to prepare our people to swim in the rough seas ahead. Georg, one, one opportunity, one challenge. I can only echo the opportunities mentioned already. Wonderful applications of this technology in quite a number of fields. The challenge is, let me be more specific, what are the challenges for Europe? One challenge is, just as we heard, think beyond the silos, think beyond the digital day and talk about education and digital, talk about research and digital, talk about economy and digital and be more specific. Let's ask what can we do in Europe together and where can we join forces, especially in terms of value creation. There is no responsible AI, but there is responsible applications of this technology. So we have to develop it in an ambitious way and we have to apply it in a responsible way and we have to define European framework conditions in order to trigger uh, economic applications. And be more specific, if we allow our Asian competitors to buy up our Eastern Europe co European countries and buy up strategic and key infrastructure, then we are going to lose the battle. So this is an important issue where we have to join forces in Europe in order to secure the unity of Europe and be competitive on a global scale. Portugal. Thank you very much. We are facing a rapid changing environment with a technology that we don't know which will be in the coming 10 years. And this can only be approached with certainly a knowledge-based um, strategy. And that is clear to, to all of us. At the same time, as Gorgo mentioned, we create jobs. And this double challenge is an opportunity for Europe. Thank you. I believe that uh, the biggest challenge we have in this area is to create a legal and ethical framework for AI to work under during the coming decades. We don't have that yet. We don't have that yet, and this but is a, a, a big task. And uh, maybe that's the biggest thing for just Europe to do, because we can't expect China to do that. No. We have to do that, that in a, a democracy us. with a history and a, a, a legal system that works. So I think uh, Europe have to, have to take this task for itself and, and have it as the most important thing and the other ones to, to uh, the competition with China and the competition with US is of course important but uh, if we don't create the legal and ethical framework where we will lose anyway. Right, mm -hmm. to do that and to tap into the databases and all that. Commissioner Gabriel, or do we, mm -hmm. okay, we'll Okay, so I think that the biggest uh, opportunity that we have is that with artificial intelligence, our uh, technology can become cognitive, so we can predict what will happen. And that means that our quality of life can improve much better, and of course, our productivity. How we fit the artificial intelligence is with data. So to log the data is maybe too late, but it's time to look after it. Because if we don't have trust to the data, we don't have users, and we don't have users, we don't have markets. So la late, latest uh, Facebook event shows how, what happens if we lose trust 
when tens of thousands of people uh, live uh, off the service. So that's one of the key services. Then when we talk about the Europe and European position uh, versus uh, states and uh, China, Europe can function only as a Europe and we should function as our artificial intelligence institutes are already functioning from 80s. They are cooperating together in a close network and the governments should do the same. And also the governments should do what uh, they are meant to, to protect our citizens to gain that trust. So legal frame should follow much faster technological progress than it does now. And the advantage of Europe is that we really put the quality of life and rights of our citizens in the center. Right. And this is long-term advantage if we will follow also in technological way the same policy. But we have to speed that legal framework thing up, right? That's, that's the problem. So we'll move on. Well, I think we have to know what's at stake here. How important artificial intelligence is, is changing the rules of the game of economic growth and social development. It's changing it totally. Till now, what we used to do is to invest in machines that embody technology and invest in people, education, that embodied knowledge. And people didn't compete with machines. Now, we've got machines that embody knowledge, which is a total different scenario and changes the rules of the game totally. At the same time, uh, this is a non-rival factor, as we economists say. That means that before, if I had a good machine, I could put only in one factory. If I, got, if I had a good technician, only one factory. Now, artificial intelligence can be used everywhere. So we go for a the winner takes all or a the winner takes most type of economy. And this is what we are dealing with China and the US, to be very honest. So that means that we'll have more market con concentration and more strategic trade policies. By the way, the Americans are doing the traditional one to the traditional one. But, uh, but now we will have China, and China is what doing. They are asking for technology all the time. Transfer of, of technology is for them the key of the game. So we have to be very conscious. This is a very, very important uh, struggle, fight for all us Europeans, and it's going to be the key of the 21st century. Right. It's a yeah, thank you very much indeed, Chairman. Recently, I visited many of the digital companies in Silicon Valley that have a footprint in Ireland. And two things which they uh, highlighted to me during my visit. First of all, uh, the availability of talent. Talent is very important. We have that talent in Ireland. And jobs is the key in relation to artificial intelligence. To ensure that we have jobs, you need to be upskilling all the time uh, and upskilling your workforce uh, because the change is rapid that's coming over the next 10 years or so. So that is important, I think, in relation to jobs. The second issue is trust. And, and that was mentioned by a previous speaker there. You've got to have a trusted data um, regime. And that's what many of the multinational companies have with us in Ireland. But also I think it's important that you have to have oversight by government. Good oversight by government is important as well because you just can't trust all, everybody all the time. Uh, we have uh, ensured that our data commissioner is resourced we, uh, to ensure that she can do her job independently. That's important. So if I can give one plug, I suppose, at the end of this session, uh, Chairperson, is Ireland, we want to be a leader in this. And that's why we have the D9 Plus meeting in Dublin on the 15th of May next, where we will have experts from both SMEs and large multinational companies on artificial intelligence. The team will be on artificial intelligence. We'll also experts from the European Union. So this is Ireland showcasing what we can do best because we're looking to the future and the future is in the digital economy and embracing that digital economy, ensuring that not just the multinationals who have the resources, but our SME sector is well resourced and that governments ensure uh, that, they take, that they embrace that technology because that's the future for jobs. And in the end, this is all about jobs. Um, right. Munia, after the announcement of President Macron, I have the impression that France wants to be a leader in this field also. Uh, biggest, biggest challenge, biggest opportunity in that regard? France wants Europe to be leader on AI. That was the message of our president. <laughs> On va avoir besoin du courage d'investir dans la recherche publique et dans les infrastructures publiques de recherche. On l'a dit, on l'a peut-être pas assez dit, mais il va falloir avoir le courage de le faire. On a annoncé ce chiffre d'un milliard cinq sur cinq ans. Et si on regarde à l'échelle de la France, c'est tout petit. Si on le cumule à l'échelle de l'Europe, on se rend compte qu'on est compétitif à travers le monde. Il va y avoir le sujet de l'accessibilité des données. On en a parlé tout à l'heure. Les données publiques, les données privées au sein des secteurs, les données privées privées, mais qui ont un intérêt pour les autres. Mais ça, on ne pourra pas le réussir si on n'a pas tous les citoyens avec nous. 
Et là, on a le premier sujet, qui est celui de l'éthique et des valeurs. Une des façons d'avoir tous les citoyens qui acceptent, et c'était dans ton discours, Maria, et c'était très important, qu'ils qu acceptent ce sentiment de progrès et tout ce que ça va apporter dans nos vies, il va falloir qu'on soit tous très transparents et qu'on se pose toutes ces grandes questions. Le deuxième sujet pour amener tous les citoyens à ce sujet, ça va être la formation, de la première année jusqu'au cours de la vie et la reformation professionnelle. Parce que les emplois vont disparaître, mais d'autres vont apparaître et il va falloir qu'on soit capable d'y aller. Puis on a une très grande opportunité, c'est peut-être le secteur de la santé. Si on fait la démonstration aux citoyens que grâce à l'intelligence artificielle, dans la santé, on sauve des vies, on fait qu'on traite mieux les gens, que ça coûte moins cher et que les gens vivent plus longtemps, je suis sûr qu'on aura une plus grande acceptabilité. Donc voilà, quelques grands enjeux pour nous et une belle opportunité sur la santé. Yeah, so uh, I think you know the potential of artificial intelligence is, of course, uh, almost unlimited, and uh, and uh, the, the current outcomes are very promising, and especially in the healthcare and financial services or agriculture areas. But in the end, uh, whether the artificial intelligence becomes really something uh, popular and accurate and and uh, very and hi highly productive, it's just a matter of whether those systems can have access to data and can, we can teach the systems to, 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 to rise to the next level. So I would like to hear to reinforce all, all of my predecessors said about the reuse of data. It's, it's, it's extremely, extremely crucial that we find a way so that uh, both the governments and the uh, private entities can bring to this, share the data and, uh, and make it, just bring it to the benefit of, of all companies within the state, also within the whole European Union. And I think the way to do it, the way to go about this, is also what, what the, the, the idea of uh, the concept of so-called uh, regulatory sandbox, where you actually, in the end, to some extent, experiment with the law of the technology, combining the best, the best, uh, the best uh, compromise, the best solution between the two, and uh, making those the, the work on those sandbox and uh, the common the common ideas, sharing the debating them within the whole European Union. This is something that we can uh, we can use to, to actually uh, make a real rivalry to the to to the other digital giants around the world. Thank you. Thank you. So, Luciano, no more misunderstandings possible. I'm here. You are there. It's uh, your turn to. Um, answer the question if uh, Europe is basically um, fit to rise to the opportunity here. What do you think? The answer is yes, uh, if. If we play as a team, uh, we heard just uh, what uh, France has in mind and is the right thing. If we play as a team, uh, that's our opportunity to uh, lead by example in the world. If we don't play as a team, that is our uh, challenge. In other words, not being truly European first, that's the challenge and the opportunity. Okay, thank you. Kathleen, what do you think? Is Europe fit? I didn't, <laughs> I didn't expect to get the last word. Yes, of um, course. Yes, uh, yes, I do, I do. And I think that we should, uh, that we should trust in ourselves that we can do this. Um, what we see with the latest developments, for example, with the Facebook uh, Cambridge Analytica scandal, um, uh, what we say in the Netherlands is eventually the, the shore will turn the ship around and that is what's happening here and there is the opportunity for Europe to say we're going to do this right, we have to do this right and um, uh, I fully agree with Luciano to, to, to say that we have to do this together at a European level if not at a global level, if we could. I, I understand that that is very difficult, but somebody can take the lead in, um, um, in, in, in setting the right framework for the responsible development, deployment, and use of AI. And I think Europe could do that. And one more thing, let's not forget that AI is not in development and we will see it somewhere in the future. It's already here. It's in our pockets. It's, 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 it's on our screen. It's, it's in our cars, it's, it's already here, it's taking decisions about our lives, uh, it's taking uh, uh, life-changing decisions sometimes. So we need to pay attention now, and I think that Europe is in the perfect position to lead that effort. Thank you. We need to pay attention now, we need to play as a team. We could be a soccer team, of course, here, um, just uh, 
give us a ball and we are a team. Um, so many people we are here on, on, on the panel. Thank you all so much for this disciplined discussion. I was a little bit afraid, and is indeed moderation is an art, um, uh, because you have all those short-term changes here on top. So thanks for your patience. Um, I apologize for every misunderstanding, and uh, thanks for all your input. Please go back to your seats. We'll have the, maybe the even most important part of it, the signing ceremony, um, uh, which, will I, which I will announce the moment you're getting back to your seats. Some of you will get back afterwards, but then for your signature. So thank you all. So, ladies and gentlemen, it's um, time for another declaration. Just let me short, briefly sort through my cards here. So, this declaration um, we are about to sign is um, a declaration in which the, the signees will express their support for common objectives such as considering the allocation of funding to the further development of AI, making, and that's really important as we learned in our discussion, public sector data available, and exchanging best practices on how to tackle the impact on AI on the labor market. So we'll have a signature ceremony now, and I will call um, the signees on stage just by the name of the country. So every country and every high representative of every country who knows that he is supposed to sign should stand up then and sign. Afterwards, we'll have a picture with the commissioner. Um, it's um, 23 names. So it's the Republic of Bulgaria, the Kingdom of Belgium, the Czech Republic, the Kingdom of Denmark, and you can all like basically in a row, uh, the Kingdom of Denmark, the Federal Republic of Germany, the Republic of Estonia, Ireland, the Kingdom of Spain, the French Republic, the Italian Republic, More to come. <laughs> That's the first 10. And it shows the importance of AI, um, that we have 23 countries signing, 20, 24 even. I forgot to mention that Austria already signed before. Fast Austrians. So after, after it, Italy, it was um, the Republic of Latvia, the Republic of Lithuania, Hungary, the Republic of Malta, the Kingdom of the Netherlands, and I'll stop here for another second. Ireland. After Ireland, it's Spain. We'll work through the queue now for a second here. Then it's the French Republic. Now France. After France, it will be Italy. And please stay for the picture. After Italy, it will be the Republic of Latvia, then Lithuania. After Lithuania, it's Hungary. And then we have the Republic of Malta after Hungary.
after Malta, it's the Kingdom of the Netherlands. And after the Netherlands, it's Poland and the Portuguese Republic and the Republic of Slovenia. Now Poland. It's still on the list. <laughs> um, Portugal, right, then Slovenia. After the Republic of Slovenia, the Slovak Republic. After that, the Republic of Finland, and then the Kingdom of Sweden. We need... Um, where do we stop? Ah, there she comes. <laughs> the Netherlands. Did Slovenia already sign? No. So it's uh, Slovenia, okay, it's uh, the Slovak Republic, the Republic of Finland. We have all, uh, the, we have the signature of Austria. Okay, yes. Yes, I will. Slovak Republic, Republic of Finland, Kingdom of Sweden, United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. No, I'm leaving. <laughs> Oops, no, not into the pictures. And the Kingdom of Norway. Kingdom of Norway. The United Kingdom is. The United Kingdom may sign also. It's. So is Commissioner Gabriel already on? She is already on stage. So, um, and afterwards, uh, uh, the commissioner will say a few words. If, if I understood that correctly, no, you. <laughs> she won't. Lots of opportunities to come. <laughs> so yeah, applause. Thank you all, thank you. And please, uh, you're invited to get back to your seats. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Congratulations on, on, on joining that declaration on maybe the most important topic we're all together faced with in the years to come. So um, right now, it's my pleasure to be almost back in time. That's amazing. Um, and uh, we'll have our lunch break. Um, we'll have lunch break now uh, until 2.30 p.m. sharp. That's really important. We made up the time, and we should start again on time. So please be back here at 2.30 p.m. sharp. And um, we'll have a lunch break now. Thanks, thanks for your interest so far. Thank you. <laughs>